Good morning, I'm Deborah Pittman and I'm a clarinetist and so I was really ecstatic to find out that you could make an instrument from clay. And today we're gonna to make a clay whistle. Very simple clay whistle, which of course you can take deeper and deeper, but today we're just gonna do a simplified whistle. We're gonna start with some soft clay. I just pulled this off with my hand and uh, it's about the size of a, um, a small orange. It's about a pound of clay if you wanna weigh it. And we're going to take some away so that we can make the mouthpiece first. And I just took a chunk of clay and I'm going to just block it. Just gonna tap on each side until I have sort of a rectangle. And I might squeeze it out to make it a little longer. I like to make um, the mouthpiece first because um, it has to set up and dry a little bit before you attach it to the whistle. And I also always like to make enough that I can have two in case the first one just doesn't work and we have to go to another, then we have another one ready. So um, I usually take a chopstick and I just thread it through, trying to stay in the center. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make something that's like a clay straw. And there it is coming out of the other end. And now that it's on there, I'm just gonna roll it, roll it. And I'm gonna roll it a little bit more so I can get it big enough to cut two mouthpieces from it. All right, so I'm going to take just the tip of this little cutting tool. And for the mouthpiece part, you are going to need something that's fairly sharp. Um, a knife, you might have to have someone a little bit older help you with the cuts, but the cuts on the mouthpiece have to be very sharp and crisp. So I'm just gonna cut this little guy in half so I have two of them. I'm gonna cut them while he's on a stick so it will hopefully maintain the shape. And I'm just gonna clean that smushed clay up a little bit, pat it down. I'm trying to rem remember to keep the hole open because that's where the air goes from your mouth into, into the whistle. And I am not gonna cut the shape on these until a little bit later until it sits up. So I'm gonna set that there. So back to our ball of clay and I'm just compacting it in my hand. I'm gonna roll it into a ball. It doesn't have to be a perfect ball. And then I'm going to cut it in half. And this is a cutting wire, but of course you can use the long piece of string. Uh, you don't have to have fancy tools to do this. Doesn't have to be perfectly in half. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to hollow this out and that's what will collect the air and help make the sound. So I'm taking half and I'm putting it in the palm of my hand and I'm gonna use my thumb and index finger. And I'm just going to press down. It's If you're familiar with a pinch pot, this is kind of how you start pinch pots. You're just going to shape it. And as you can see, I'm a, uh, I'm making a, a big depression here in the, in the middle. And I'm going to try not to go so far that I lose my nice thick edge because the thick edge is how we're going to connect the two pieces. And if it gets too thin, then there's complications. I'm going to continue to pinch this with my thumb and my index finger. And sometimes I use both of these two fingers just because I can get it a little bit more even. When I was taught how to make this, they always said, Use just the index finger, but I'm going to do what works for my body a little bit better. There we are. I'm going to hold on to that for now, and I'm gonna pinch the other side, and the goal is to make them as equal as possible, so when you put them back together, they fit back together pretty well. So I'm just gonna pinch this second one, get it ready, and um, this is a really good size to start with. Um, the the pitch or the note that the uh, whistle makes is totally dependent on how large the body is. And so sometimes I've made really big ones and I'll show you some of those later um, because I like low notes. I love low pitches. I have a low voice, so those resonate for me. So let's see, these look, no, this one's bigger. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna pinch this one a little bit more. 
and the size is really um it's really up to you it's really good to start with the smaller one so that you if you have some problems you have fewer problems and that looks good so i'm going to take a this is called the serrated rib and it's got an edge on it that scratches this up nicely but you can use a fork you can just use a fork to scratch it up i'm going to take a sponge get a little bit of water and I mean a little bit. Don't drown your clay. It'll take forever to dry and it'll be really sticky. Um, I'm going to put a little water on that and then just scratch the edge. And this gives me a better surface for the two sides to join together. So I'm going to scratch that. Let it sit for a second. Put a little water on this edge. When you start with really soft clay, um, really soft clay helps you to be able to get these guys together and get them to meld together. All right, so I'm, I scratched, I put water on first, then I scratched the surface. Now I'm putting water on a second time and that will really make these two pieces of clay grab each other. I'm going to take them and I'm going to just give a little screwing motion like I'm screwing the lid on a jar and that'll help them stick a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take my thumb, and this is where the soft clay really comes into play. I'm gonna take my thumb and just smooth over that connection. This is one of my favorite parts if I, if I have clay that's soft enough. If the clay's too hard, you can still do it, but it's a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna smooth that over, get everything sealed, and now there's air trapped inside and um, you can take advantage of, you now have an opportunity to just smooth all sorts of little cracks. This is very moist clay, but if you had clay that was drier, some of these cracks would need a quick swipe with the sponge in order to, in order to be smoothed out. But I'm just going to go over that a couple of times, over my seam, and I'm going to go over it in one direction and then I'm going to turn it around and press it down in the other direction. Okay, so we're going to take one of the mouthpiece um, tubes, straws, and we're going to cut it on an angle, a V shape. And sometimes when you go to cut this, you might find that it's a little sticky and it's too wet. So you have to wait till it dries a little bit, till it sets up a little bit. And I'm gonna cut the other side. It's not critical that they're both exactly the same uh, angle. They just, one is going to help to cut the edge of the wind to make the sound, and the other is just going to help to connect to the, uh, to the whistle. All right, here we go. So we're gonna take this guy, and you have to decide where you want to put the tube. Um, I've had, and I'll show you some whistles later, where I, while this was setting up a little bit, I decorated it a bit, and then I put the tube on and the tube is coming out of a strange angle of the guy's head. So um, I don't think I'm going to do any faces on this. Uh, so we find a spot. I'm going to go right here. And we're just going to go in. I'm going to use the pencil this time to show you that it works just as well as this does. I'm just going to go in. I'm going in at an angle. Maybe a 45 degree angle. It's not, it's not that critical. And once I get inside, I am going to press the clay around the edge against the pencil. What I'm trying to do, I'm actually going to get my finger in there and do a little bit too. What I'm going to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to thin this edge. Remember I talked about the sharpness of the mouthpiece, so the mouthpiece has to be on a sharp edge as well. And let's see if this will just play without the mouthpiece. <laughs> So if it plays without the mouthpiece, it'll play even better with the mouthpiece. So we're going to go back to, um, this clay is kind of wet. I don't think I need to really scratch it before I put water on it, but this will take a little while to figure out how to get this centered. You'll have to put it on and hold it and try it, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna just dip that and make it a little bit wet. And this is a challenge of holding it in one hand when you make it too big, but it can be done. I'm going to line that up. Come back here. No, I have to find the side. There we go. The side. You want to go opposite the side that you thinned out. 
the edge that you thinned out. Okay. I'm going to thin out the back a little bit also just to move that clay away so I have a nice sturdy place to sit it on. That's thinned out. And I, was, I can also flip it around if one side works better than the other. So here's the rim and I'm pushing the clay away and I just I, I need to have a really good opening for the wind to go in. So if there's some schmutz down here and it's too thick, the wind is uh, the air is not going to go in as well. So you got to play around with this a little bit. So I'm going to work to find the right angle. And the right angle is where this little edge here splits, splits the air column and bounces off the edge on the other side. There is another way of making mouthpieces for whistles, but it is more complex. Um, and so I like this technique where you put the little mouthpiece on rather than cut it into the whistle. So we are there. You have to hold on to that. You have to get a few little pinches of clay to secure it. Little pinch and I'm just going to stick this one back there. And I'm going to use the chopstick to get it in. And that's support. I'm, I'm going to work to put support around this entire mouthpiece, but I have to keep playing it to make sure I haven't moved it. Okay, I want to show you this. You cannot cover the hole at all. That collar needs to stay back. It's like supporting from behind. And that's the whistle. And so I would like to invite Gabe to start and I will come in and do something on top of his beat. Thank you. Thank you.